exposing the greatest con and cover-up in the history of this country. It involves our banks, the Federal Reserve, our Congress, and of course, you and me. First, though, think of the Fed as the godfather in this con. The role of the godfather, played by former Fed Chief Alan Greenspan, denying that he ever knew what he helped perpetrate, because Greenspan was working for all of the banks against you. The bankers, of course, the unrepentant con men being supported by the Federal Reserve. She picked him clean. So good getting that money for free, getting away with it. Here's how the con went down. The bankers were operating under an implicit guarantee from the godfather, the Federal Reserve, in the form of guaranteed low interest rates, guaranteed cheap money exclusively for the con men. Then, Chairman Greenspan, the godfather, would agree to hold those rates, let, let's say, 2% for as far as the eye could see. The banks, or bankers, the con men, would borrow that money from the Federal Reserve, let's say 2%, and then turn around and lend it back to you at, let's say, 6%. That encouraged the patsies, you and me, the patsies, you and me, and here exactly is where the con comes in. As you and I both know, the banks had no money. They were getting it from the Federal Reserve, which is us. It's funny money. They had no capital to back up their lending. But that did not matter because they also had no risk in the lending. If the lending paid off, they win. And they won big when they did that because they did it with leverage. Top Manhattan executives alone paid themselves $121 billion in bonuses over the first part of the decade. Now, mind you, when the bank loans failed, they knew they were too big to fail. So the rest of us, you and me, would have to bail them out. The ignorant electorate, if you will, the patsies, who had no idea, and really still don't, understand how badly they are being conned by our government and our banks. Once the banks, however, realized there was no losing, the question was, how do we make the con bigger? How do we get more money through this crazy machine so we can get richer? The question, or the answer, I should say, is simple. Make more loans, more credit card loans. Think of all the credit card applications that were sent to you over the past 10 years. More car loans, it's the reason General Motors went upside down. It wasn't the cars, it was because they were running a financing scheme. Home loans, you know the narrative. So the people most hurt by this con, the home buyers, the cops, the teachers, pensioners who were suckered in by the bait of low credit, and high returns in exchange for buying worthless toxic assets manufactured by the bankers. That's why your pension fund was wiped out. That's why the interest rate on your savings to this day remains around zero. If you're a retiree, you know what I'm talking about. It's also why you're now drowning in a mortgage on a house that's worth, worth far less than you owe because the bankers were happy to lend you money they did not have to drive up the price of that house because they knew the more loans the better, but no downside for them. So what's next? Higher taxes for us, higher interest rates for us to pay for the bailouts while our government that was theoretically elected by us refuses to recover the stolen money by the con men or fix the system that allows them to continue to perpetrate the con against you and me. The current financial reform legislation uh, proposed by our government would give the godfather, the Federal Reserve in this case, even more power to regulate the game the con men, represented by the Wall Street bankers, of course, giving our Congress a cut of the action, $344 million so far lobbying against the bill, second only to health care. We saw how well it worked out for special interest on health care. Home run, they got a guaranteed customer base with no reform. I'm sure the bankers will do pretty well as well. All this, of course, while assuring our lawmakers, many of whom do not even understand how the con works in the first place, that the financial crisis has been fixed, of course, with an infinite supply of your money. After all, just check out stocks over the past year. We are back over 10,000 on the Dow, thanks to that blank check from the Federal Reserve. So now, as we finally head towards Congress debating financial reform in our country, the question must be asked, does it make sense for our government to give more power to a Federal Reserve and banker con men who unrepentantly caused this crisis and make money at your expense on the pension side and on the credit side? That's the current plan. 